14 February, as we know, has been declared as the chocolate day, especially here in Ghana. And this sweet chocolate is made from uh, the fruit called cocoa, like the one you can see me having here. Mm. Well, the biggest producers of this cocoa are Ghana and Ivory Coast. On average, Ghana produces about 750,000 tons of cocoa and mostly exports these products. So this product being exported generates about 2 billion Ghana city for the country. As the highest export crop foreign exchange earner, the cocoa sector employs about 30% of the nation's population and serves as a major source of income for many households. When I was harvesting every month, like if I, I have a, five bags per a month and you multiply by 12, 12 months, it means you get about 60 bags of cocoa times the price of the cocoa. Okay. So, you know, this time it's 475 Ghana Okay. Two times 60 bags, you know, it's something. If you are not doing any work at all and you are a cocoa farmer and you manage to get this thing, it, it can, yeah. you can stay. Our forefathers had land, so we decided to farm. At least we are able to earn something to feed our families. So far, over 50 million seedlings have been distributed to farmers under an initiative of Cocoa Board in a bid to maintain good yields in the farmlands across the country. However, cocoa farmers insist there are still some inherent challenges. Every year, we must pray our farm three times, but we don't have the money. We also hear they are distributing fertilizers, but we the small-scale farmers never get some. Fertilizer. We need help from government. We need money and chemicals for our crops. When they give the fertilizers to people to distribute, we don't get our portion. So we plead that the fertilizers are given to individual farmers. Okay, this is one of the major challenges the small scale farmers are facing because they don't have access to regular spraying of their products to apply the right pesticides. In recent times, the sector has been characterized by global price volatility. Some cocoa farmers express their opinions on the situation. I, I always say that farmers are people that are being cheated in the country than anybody. Because like if you are a, a cash crop producer, when you, you produce the, the, your, the product, when it's come out, you cannot determine how you can, but they, 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 they say this is how much you buy it. If you, you don't give it to them, that means you can't do it anything with the, the product. So definitely you have to do that. So we are just pleading that the government should use the world market price also for the farmers within the country so that it will, it will encourage everybody to enter into cocoa farm. But these days I've seen that the youth, most of the youth are entering into cocoa farm because looking at the, the past three years, the seedlings that the Ministry of Agriculture produce they you don't even it becomes difficult for them to even share it because people are demanding the demand is so great that at times they have to do it twice within the season so once we are entering into it the youth are also entering into it uh, encouraging the president to i mean increase the price for us another alarming situation taking a toll on cocoa production in the country 
is the loss of farmlands to illegal mining. The issue is reportedly prevalent in the Ashanti, Western, Eastern and Central regions. Mr. Silfi, another farmer, describes how he has become a victim of such circumstances. As for the illegal mining, like our area, my area like East Achim, when you will come there, especially we have two constituencies, the Bakwa North and then the Bakwa South. The Bakwa North is at Kafuku Kwentinu area. For that area, we don't have the problem of illegal mining. But when you come to the Bakwa South, around Kibi and its environment, the illegal mining is something you, you can't do away with. It's, it's very, very serious at that area. Most of our cocoa farms have been devastated. And we find it difficult to eradicate that, that situation. It is a very big anger that we are trying to eradicate, but we have tried all possible means. The municipality has a municipal task force. We have done our best. The regional task force has done their best. The national security has done their best. And all has been in vain. So most of our cocoa farms have been devastated. As I'm speaking to you, at my area, the, the farm that I used to get the award, the illegal miners are just at the boundary of that cocoa farm. So to tackle the menace, however, the minister designate for the Western region, Dr. Kweku Efriye, outlines some measures his office will initiate to combat the issue. For example, when I hear that a farmer says somewhere and then Galamse people come and then mine and devastate his land or his farm, that is not correct. Is the farmer who rather goes to the Galamse and say, come and do some little prospecting whether this place is rich in gold? And then they sell it. But because cocoa farms do not bring so much income to the farmer, and most of them are old people, they are ready to let these illegals come and do their farm. So uh, do the mining in their farms. So we have to go down first and get the primary thing, uh, what do you call it, right. I'm sure I do not have all the ideas, but... By all means, and it is an intersectorial collaboration thing. The chiefs are here. They have a huge role to play. They, have a, they are listening to me because I know that, unfortunately, some of them, it's a very controversial subject, I've said, invite some of these people there and they pollute the water. Not all of them. But we have to stop this menace one way or the other. And some school of thought advocates appropriate coexistence of cocoa production and small-scale mining based on some considerations. But research points to the fact that for some communities, some activities such as illegal mining must be completely discontinued, allowing smallholder agriculture as a main source of livelihood. So this is a seed production unit where seedlings are being nursed, soon to be distributed to farmers across the nation. Well, seeing as the cocoa industry employs about 800,000 farm families, it will be in the nation's best interest should the managers of the economy pay due attention to the sector in terms of availability of fungicides and adequate education to the farmers to boost production. Reporting for Joy News, Shilata Maklo.